Hello again. For this lesson, we will continue with our motto and dynamo topic. So, last lesson we have learned the Fleming's left hand rule. Can you still remember the Fleming's left hand rule? Let's have a bit of recap. So, this is how you do the Fleming's left hand rule. F B I. F, the term represents the force. B represents the magnetic field, and then the I represents the current. So F B I. So for this lesson, we're going to learn the secret behind the working principle of a direct current motor. So this is how a direct current motor looks like. So firstly, we will have two permanent magnets. In the, for this case, here is the North Pole and here is the South Pole. And next, we will have a coil. Yes, this is a coil uh, which can conduct electricity. And then we have to introduce this thing here. These two things here are what we call as a commutator. So we will have one pair of commutators right here. So, and then there's this thing in contact with the commutator. This thing is called as carbon brush. And here is the coil. Okay, so the carbon brush is connected to a circuit. So we have a variable resistor, we have batteries, we have a um, switch. So this is roughly how a car direct current motor work. So you need to know that these commutators, this pair of commutators, it can be rotated. So when it is rotated, these two points, this pair, they are not in contact. So there will be some points where the commutators will have a loss of contact with the carbon brush and thus it will have no current flowing through this coil. So let's move to um, the principle. Firstly, these two are the commutators and these two are the carbon brushes. So when the current is switched on, the switch is closed and the current flows through it and the commutators are in this position. So what will, what will be the current flow? It will be in this direction. Next, we will look at the coil. We know here at this point, the coil is connected to the orange color commutator and at this point, it's connected back to the pink color commutator as an indicator. So, the current should be flowing like this. So, we know the current flowing like this and through this commutator, so from this point, the current should be flowing in this direction. One cycle back to the pink commutator. So it flows back to the battery. Next, we have the current flows through this conductor here. And then we have the B force, which is the magnetic field. So applying your Fleming's left hand rule, F, B, I, F is your force, B is your magnetic field here, I is your current. So let's look at the force, magnetic force at this side of the coil. I is like this, B is like this, B in this direction, I in this direction. So the force will be downwards, yes. So this side of the coil, it will be rotating downwards. So for this side, I is in this side, B is in this direction, so force is upward force. So you can see this coil, at this side it will be downward force, at this side it will be an upward force. So it will be rotating anti-clockwise. So after it rotated, the commutator will become like this. It rotated anti-clockwise. Can you see? The orange color commutator becomes in this direction and the pink at this position. 
So at this position, you can see that the carbon brushes have lost contact with the commutators. So at this point, there will be no current flow through this coil. So what will happen for this coil? As we know that at this point, the coil rotate in this direction. So when at this moment, the coil has no motion due to no current flow. So what will happen is the inertia of this rotation causing it to continue the motion back to the horizontal. So the coil will be rotated back to this from here will be rotated back to this position. So the commutator will be rotated anti-clockwise to this position. So you can see the orange color commutator will be in right side and the pink color will be on the left side. So after it rotated, the coil will be in this position again. So you can see this point is connected to the pink, this point is connected to the orange. So let's look at the current flow again. So the carbon brushes have, con have the contact with two commutators. So the current flow will flow through the coil. So let's do it again. The current flow and it has to be flowing back to the battery. So this point connect here. So it should be like this. And then flows back to the orange color like this. So again, the permanent magnet provides a magnetic field in this direction. So applying your Fleming's left hand rule again. So at this point, at this side, the current is in this direction and B, magnetic field, is in this direction. So the magnetic force will be a downward force. So do it again at this side, the current here, B field here, force upward. So it's still an anti-clockwise rotation of the coil. And then it will eventually goes back to this position again, where the coil rotated anti-clockwise to a vertical direction. So the commutators have lost contact with the carbon brush, so no current flow in the coil. So there, there will be no magnetic force acting on this. So what will happen? The inertia again comes in. Inertia of the motion brings the coil back to the horizontal plane. So it will eventually goes back to this and then again to this and then again to this and again to this it will be one whole cycle. So the rotation of the coil will be what you can see from the rotation of the motor. So that's how a motor rotates when you provide an electrical energy. So that's it for the uh, working principle for the direct current motor. So stay tuned for our next lesson. We will be learning about dynamo. Thank you.